Moving on to the next uh, presentation is uh, experience with cast material ductile cast iron. It will be presented by Dr. Wolfgang Steinvars. He currently serves as the Executive Vice President of SimpleComp in Germany, which is the leader of the European Reactor Safety Research Proposals, COMAS, and ECHOSTARS, as part of the fifth EU Research and Development Framework Program. Prior to working at SimpleComp, Dr. Steinvars worked at uh, Siemens AG, Nuclear Power Generation of Germany, as a project manager for the HTR Research Program at the HTR Test Facility at uh, ULIC, Germany. Uh, Dr. Steinvars has a Bachelor of Science degree in Physics from the University of Bonn in Germany and a PhD in Engineering from the Technical University of Aachen, also in Germany. So with that, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. First of all, I have to thank the NRC for inviting Simple Come to this conference to give us the opportunity for this report. Coming to the presentation, the title is Experience with Dr. Cast Iron Fuel Cars, as you can see that in the picture. Next slide, please. The first slide shows the worldwide usage of DCI cast technology for storage and transport of spent fuel and nuclear fuel. All of these cars, you can see here uh, this uh, Surrey plant, the uh, a Vivendine plant in Switzerland, Dukovani in Czech Republic, Kovac, South Africa, Mall, Belgium, Gorlieb in Germany. Uh, all of these cars are manufactured from the same basic DCI material with its ferritic microstructure and the embedded graphite spheres. This material provides extraordinary safety characteristics, especially with view to accidental impact scenarios. It has also to be stated that the final application for storage and or transportation does generally not influence the real production process, which means the casting. Next slide. Taking the caster type as an example, this listing demonstrates the broad spectrum of designs related to diverse reactor types or special waste handling, as is the case for the caster HAW for returning uh, the high level waste from the reprocessing plant in uh, La Hague, France. The number of the inserted spent fuel assemblies is mostly defined by local requirements as well as the cooling down phase after the operational period. You can see here, for example, the spreading of for the PWR with the Roman 5, which means five years for reactor cooling phase, uh, reactor, uh, cooling down phase after the reactor period. 19 pieces, up to 21 pieces can be installed there for this special type of casters. For 10 years, you have a spreading of 28 to 33. For BWR, from 52 for five years and 10 years, 74. The HAW is, uh, let, let's say, a sampling for a high burned up material. And uh, what I said, it is taken from the waste uh, for uh, the uh, reprocessing plant in La Hague. Next slide, yes. SimpleCam's record is represented by this listing, leading to an overall production of actually more than 11,500 casks and containers for red waste and span fuel designed, licensed, and being used over more than 35 years. You see the, the spreading of all the types, castors is for span fuel, mosaic, and cast iron containers are for high level, mostly for high level as well as medium levelized waste, non fuel waste, granulate, concre concrete containers, or in special containers even special local designs for spent fuel casks. This picture, the next picture, introduces some comments to major issues which were also discussed in this round here around long-term behavior and safety characteristics. As you may know, in Germany, final disposal of spent fuel and high radioactive material is planned to be realized in underground salt domes. A lot of testing and development work has been successfully done to establish the disposal process and to improve the ability of ductile cast iron under such extreme corrosion atmospheres. Before we look at the corrosion rates measured in several research 
uh, work, I would mark that for final disposal, an additional lid can be welded on top of the existing double lid system of the DCI cask to improve or to optimize the encapsulation process if needed, if wished. Up to now, it is not the case as an, let's say, definition that it has to be done. It is perhaps not well known that welding of DCI is an established procedure, certified, uh, tested in a lot of research works, and periodical test pieces must be welded under permanent control of the authority, which is called the BAM supervisors, to demonstrate the welding quality. The corrosion studies, even uh, very early in, the, in 1989, showed the corrosion rates mentioned here. Uh, and you have to think about the fact that the salt dome is very extreme, uh, delivered extreme conditions. And you see the, uh, the most uh, important material, which is attacking the, uh, the ductile cast iron, uh, was mentioned here, natrium chloride, rich brine, and uh, magnesium chloride, rich brines. The maximum corrosion rate was rough, roughly 200 micrometers per year. Only to give an idea about the consequences of such corrosion rate for long-term disposal, you see the, the, the short estimate. The wall thickness for such containers is roughly 400 millimeters. And with that maximum corrosion rate as a conservative assumption would only harm 21 millimeters in 100 years. So the, uh, the official meaning was corrosion does not degrade, degrade the safety or functionality of the cask. A further indication for the improved application of DCI under, under marine conditions is the wind energy. Uh, roughly 20 years ago, uh, we were asked from uh, the people building up uh, wind turbines, wind towers for the German Northern Sea, um, asked us uh, to uh, make research work to implement this ductile cast iron uh, material for uh, towers, wind, wind towers, uh, for wind uh, powers uh, up above 5 megawatt because uh, steel, forged steel, as well as welded steel, uh, was, was not able to be implemented for such uh, high uh, impacts uh, due to the uh, cycling uh, impacts. And we did it since 1997 on onshore, which means near the Northern Sea, for example, as well as since 2004 in offshore conditions. Believe it, no degradation effects could be detected even they made a lot of uh, uh, examinations, if there is any. And we got all the results, and we have to adjust uh, in our manufacturing branch uh, the, the material, but it was not necessary. Concerning the issue in brittlement, it has to be stated that DCI, with its remarkable material characteristics, has nothing to do with gray cast iron, which was 40 years ago the this, this, this standard for cast iron having a completely different microstructure without spheroidal graphite. I say that because I'm always hearing in international discussions cast iron has problems with embrittlement. This is not the case if you have the spheroidal graphite structure. The positive effect of this graphite shape can be demonstrated with the results of special drop tests performed under the control of the German licensing authority. I have uh, two, two slides to show you the results, uh, especially remarkable um, uh, results of uh, two drop tests. The first has been done with a cylinder drop in a middle drop height of five meter uh, using uh, special recycling material, material which is not favorable for the special, uh, for the, the strength values of uh, the material to have a conservative assumption for the material behavior. In top of, on top of that, we uh, applied an artificial floor covering 15% of the wall thickness was made on the bottom side, which, is, uh, which was the attacking uh, area for this drop. Container temperature was minus seven, uh, 20 degrees centigrade, which is not also, let's say, a little bit conservative in comparison to, uh, let's say, normal room temperatures or outside temperatures. The result was no crack initiation. 
not only no crack, no crack initiation. You can, you can see that directly in the microstructure analysis or in under other uh, inspections. The next uh, picture shows the result, what happened. And this was also the case in the first result. We made a drop test for, in this case, for one meter drop, but we, use, we used a very high content of embrittling elements in particular chromium, copper, and nickel, to realize a very conservative worst condition for the material conditions, to lower the strength values, for example. And we did it, uh, resulting in a high portion of perlite, which was in that case 95%. Normally, we have 5%. We have 5 so it is a big, big difference to that. We, uh, we uh, installed clearly a low elongation of 4%. Normally, we have 15 to 20%, which is much more than that. So we have had really a worse uh, selection of the constitution of uh, the material. And even on top of that, we realized, similar to the first picture, an artificial floor on the bottom size, the same 10% of, of the wall thickness. And you can see the result on the left side of the picture. You see the, uh, the notch at uh, the left side. And you see the uh, small face in micrometers, in micrometers, uh, uh, a short initiation process of a crack after this uh, impact, but a self-controlled arrest. So we could demonstrate it was accepted, it was accepted in any further lysing procedures that the, the graphite shapes, the graphite spheres, are able to, uh, with, to uh, via their ductility, providing the ductility of the material, to make a blockage of further propagation of uh, the, the crack. So it was accepted that the material is able to self for self-controlled arrest of any cracking process. The next picture shows on the left side further impact tests we did, and we made it successfully over all the past years, leading to a long list of certificates and licensing approvals nationally as well internationally, even also the DCI certification by ASME uh, in, in the frame of the code case N670 and so following up discussions with the ASME team. Next picture. This picture shows uh, further extreme tests we made uh, with a custom mock-up. You see that on the, on the left side. This is the, the central part of uh, the ductile cast iron casks, uh, which was uh, crashed by an, uh, a supersonic missile, and uh, the only result was the deformed cooling fins, the, the ribs outside. So no special integrity loss could be uh, detected. The next picture shows in the same area and also uh, covering the residual risk incidents, an explosion of a liquid gas tank uh, on uh, the impact uh, was uh, done on the, on the caster. Uh, you see the, the, as a yellow one uh, on the left picture on top, uh, which was positioned nearly under the tank and uh, believe everything was destroyed, but uh, the cast to cast had no loss of integrity. Showing the further extreme test, which was done here in, in the US, uh, we made a drop test, it's uh, 20 years ago, it was 20 years ago, a drop test for a mosaic container. Uh, this is not a container for spent fuel element, but the same material is used for all the containers we are preparing from the small non-fuel up to the cast container with only with one shot of uh, the material constitution. And uh, so we can use it also for uh, covering uh, such extreme tests of impacts. And the height of the drop was 800 meters done from a helicopter. The result can see, be seen on the left side. We destroyed a little bit of the surface of the, uh, of the Earth, but the detect, detect, uh, detection or the examination of the cast showed no loss of integrity. In the same line, the uh, licensing authority, the BAM in Berlin, uh, made um, with a high active waste castor, this is that with the highest 
uh, material, uh, loaded material, radioactive material from, uh, for the, uh, re um, the return of the uh, uh, reprocessing material uh, was uh, tested, uh, the integrity was tested in an um, 21 uh, drop uh, testing process uh, with uh, different uh, orientations you can see that here in the picture. And after more than 20 drops to the one to two scale of this cask iron containers with the same wall thickness and an end, only the, the size was uh, scaled up, it was, could be detected that nev uh, never uh, happened that uh, n n uh, detection could be found uh, uh, for the loss of any integrity. Coming up to the last uh, topic I would um, report on is the long-term behavior of ductile cast iron materials. Starting in 1983, in, uh, the first castor was positioned in the Zwillack plant in uh, Switzerland, and let's say the last one, roughly in the 2000, is mentioned here, uh, we, are doing a rough, we are performing and manufacturing roughly 50 castors and uh, uh, similar uh, fu uh, spent fuel element casts per year. So it is a normal, continuous procedure. Uh, over 30 years of operational experience can therefore uh, be stressed in, and no issues for degradation of the package have been detected. And we should mention that all these testings have, are done with the eight I principles. We as a manufacturer have to do that, that the customer do it. Then the, the, the TIF, we call it TIF experts, is an, uh, an organization from, uh, installed from the government do it, and the BIM is a licensing authority in, in, uh, in total. So we have four people or four institutions assessing that, and uh, you can believe that uh, sometimes very strong discussions came up. And so I'm very convinced that that's what I'm saying here, is that what are the facts. Last but not least, in this uh, area, um, I should uh, mention the integrity test of one of out of the 35 casters stored at the Surrey ISFSI. Uh, you know that perhaps uh, the, the, the history is mentioned on the right side. Uh, the re official report from the INEL indicated an approval of 15 years operation without any degradation effects. The lids were tested, the seals, the bolts, cast internals, and they showed uh, best uh, opportunity for long-term integrity. So the summary can be remarked as follows. The design of DCI casks utilizes the advantageous casting process for realization of a compact cast body without any weldings. It's one shot for any cask even for storage, even for transport, or for a multi-purpose cars, it's always the same procedure. So a very standardized process on the basis of more than 11,500 casks. The material DCI is able to withstand extreme external loads based on its unique microstructure. The ductility, which is the basis for that, is given from the spheroidal, the nodule, the nodule shape of the, of the graphite. And uh, it is worthwhile always to say that it is not comparable to gray iron, cast iron, which was normally the standard 20 or 40 years ago. Manufacturing of DCI cask is a well-established standardized production process. Each week on, th on Thursday, we produce a new castor since years, since 40 years, and so the next years up to 2000. 22, you know that Germany has been decided, has decided to phase out. Uh, we have to produce further 600 cascars. We know the right time. We have to know the manufacturing and all the testing procedures up to up to that date. DCI casks provide also flexibility in storage and transport of SFE and radioactive waste material without any principal modifications. This is what I meant, that uh, it is completely uh, not influencing the, the, the casting process. They have the same conditions, the same procedure, 
uh, for the, the smaller one up to the biggest one for spent fuel element. That closes the, uh, the presentation. Thank you again for the opportunity to, to present it here. Hey, thank you. Uh, I think we have time for one question, and then we have to move on with the uh, final presentation. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, about uh, these tests. These, you showed a lot of tests of, of this uh, ductile uh, cast iron. However, uh, you didn't talk about testing uh, material that had been irradiated. Uh, this irradiated. Irradiated. Uh, I, I think all those tests were un unirradiated material. Yeah. Uh, what happens if you irradiate this over a long period of time and then do the same test? Uh, we did it in, uh, let's say, 20 years, 30 years ago with, uh, with several uh, research work. You can read it in, uh, in the internet or in, and in special reports from the BAM. But we were involved clearly if, uh, as a manufacturer to do that, and the tests uh, didn't lead to any, uh, not de de didn't lead to any uh, influence on the further licensing procedure. This is not a topic uh, for uh, that material since years. So there was no like carbon alignment or anything with radiation. This is not a problem for that material. It's the same as I should say also. This is also not a point, and you you, you saw it for the corrosion effect. Uh, what I did not mention but, uh, was the effect that ductile cast iron is uh, generating, let's say, like a patina, like for the copper. And uh, so that is also a further barrier, and this is and one of the reasons that the corrosion rates are starting a little bit and then stopped due to this barrier. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm going to move on to our last topic. Mm -hmm.